our sin together. Amen. 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 Bless you. Bless you. Amen. Give it all praise this to our Heavenly Father, to Jesus Christ, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. Yes, he is. To Pastor White for this opportunity to share a word to my Brethren, Jones, and Gip, and Tate, for their ongoing support, and to you all of my father's children. Right. I, 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 uh, just want you to bear with me just for a little bit. Amen. time, I just want to share with you what a few things that I've uh, observed in the passage this morning. Um, turn to the second uh, book of Corinthians, Ooh. and we're going to be in chapter 4. One of the constants in life is that we are going to have to deal with difficulties. Yeah. And as much as we prefer not to have to struggle, mm -hmm. to prefer to not have to deal with adverse circumstances, mm -hmm. to prefer 
to not have to shed any tears, to prefer to not have to go through pain, to prefer to not have to hurt in the midnight hour, to, to, to prefer to not have to deal with all of the negative things that life can throw our way as much as we would like to avoid those things. Mm -hmm. The fact of the matter is, is all of us, all of us have to deal with something on this side. That's right. It's, it, 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 it's unfortunate, it's unfortunate, it's unfortunate that, 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 that we have to go through these things. But, 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 but what we have to understand is that there has never been, uh, well, 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 let's say it this way. I, 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 I read a quote. It said that, and, and, and it, it has some humor in it, but it has a bit of truth to it. It said, Christians are like tea bags. Yeah. They're not good for anything unless you put them in some hot water. All right. <laughs> and see, the, 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 the thing about that statement is that what we have on the inside of us is not going to come out on the end, come from the out, inside out unless we have to go through some of the experiences that life throws our way. Well. Because if we are honest with ourselves, there is a lot that we had to endure that we learned over the course of our lives that we had never would have learned had we not had to go through some struggles. If you if, if you hadn't have, if you hadn't have stolen that that spam from the grocery store, you wouldn't know. Your, 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 your mom and daddy wouldn't have had to teach you that was wrong to steal. So you learned the lesson real quick, fast, and in a hurry. And, 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 and if you hadn't have mouthed off to Big Mama, you wouldn't have learned that you be, it's better to respect your elders. If you if, 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 if you've never done anything wrong, if you hadn't done anything wrong, you would have never had to experience the the side of being taught by life's experiences. All right, come on now. All right. Because in reality, life's experiences are what allows the good stuff on the inside of us to come out. If you've never experienced the, the, the boiling of tea, you know tea ain't no good in cold water. The stuff on the inside of tea doesn't typically come out when you got cold water. You got to cry a little bit of heat. And, 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 and the same thing is for us as Christians, as long as it, it's all going good, as long as we don't experience any downside, as long as we don't experience any heartache, as long as we never hurt sometimes, we won't learn the things that God has for us to learn so that we can be better vessels for him and the kingdom of God. Because oftentimes the things that we go through are for the purpose of better equipping us to be a vessel of Christ. Mm -hmm. says, so, so we look at this text, we look at this text. Paul had been, he had been dealing with this Corinthian church for quite a while. Uh, this is what many believe to be his fourth letter to the church. First Corinthians is, 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 is assumed to be his second letter, and fourth, second Corinthians is assumed to be his fourth letter. But, 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 but Paul had devoted so much time to the Corinthian church, much more than any other church in, 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 uh, in, in the New Testament. And he had been, second Corinthians, he had been defending his faith. He had been defending his faith. His, his position as an apostle of Christ because between the first Corinthians and second Corinthians word had gotten back to Paul that some 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 uh, uh, some evildoers some false prophets had infiltrated the church and they were bringing into question whether or not Paul was who he said he was they were trying to get people to question whether or not this Paul that this, this Jesus that Paul preached was really the one that came to save their soul they were getting trying to get people to question that Paul wasn't who he said he was. So Paul spent a lot of his time in 2 Corinthians trying to validate and verify the fact that I am an apostle of Christ and God has commissioned me to go and preach the gospel. All right. All right. So we had to 
get things straight. And when we look at in, 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 in here in this fourth chapter, fourth chapter, he starts off by talking about we have this ministry. Uh, and we have, uh, he, he keeps going on and he talks about the gospel in, in verse 3 that be hid and is hid to them that are lost. Yeah. He, he, he keeps going on and he says in verse 5, where, for we preach not of ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord. For, for God hath commanded the light to shine out of darkness. Yeah. And shine in the hearts and, uh, to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. And then in verse 7, he, he starts with a but. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And when you look at when when when, when you look at but but is always there to negate or to bring into contrast something that went before. So he is trying to 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 compare and contrast something here in verse seven that came before. What did he say before? He says, "For God commanded the light to shine out of darkness, and that shine in our hearts to give the light of knowledge and glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ." But we have this treasure. So what he was trying to let them know first and foremost is, 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 is that we have to be aware that I'm not coming on my own. I'm not coming in my own power. I'm not coming telling you about the good things that I've done. I'm not coming to tell you about the things that I think I'm, I, I, uh, but, but I, I'm coming in the name of Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ has hid something in my heart that it is going to allow me to continue. But we have this treasure in earth and inside of me, on the inside of every believer of Christ, we have this treasure. A treasure. A treasure. A treasure. A treasure that money can't buy. A treasure. A treasure. A treasure, a treasure worth more than any stone that, 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 that you can find. Worth, worth more than anything on the place of this earth. But he says, I put this treasure in jars of clay. He says, but we have this treasure. And, and you know, when you think about the word treasure, the treasure, the, the word treasure is, 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 is the Greek word, it actually is where we get the word the source from. Uh, it's, it is it, 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 defined as a, a collection of things of value, or it, 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 it brings to mind a, a, anything of value that is, 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 is uh, uh, highly sought after. So it, it, it's designating something of value, and when you think of think of think of this this gospel, this gospel of Jesus Christ, you can't understand the value that comes out of knowing that Jesus Christ was the Lord and Savior that came to save me from my sins. There's nothing more valuable on the face of this earth than knowing that. Nothing more valuable than knowing that. And you know what? The, uh, the problem is that there's not enough people right now that finds that to be valuable. All right, all right, all right. All right. And that's a sad thing. Yeah, it is. Sad thing to not see in the face of all that you're experiencing that you have a savior. Not being able to recognize that having having Jesus in your life can change so much stuff that's going on. Yes. It, it can change the way you think. It can change the way you act. It can change the way you 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 you, you respond to folks. Because you know, if it had not been Jesus in my life, I would have responded to some of y'all, some of the things that y'all said, some of the things that I might not have responded like I do now. But because of Jesus in my life. Not been for Christ in y'all life, y'all y'all probably wouldn't be sitting here right now. Because there was a time when many of us was on Saturday night. We we did so much on Saturday night we couldn't even get up in the morning on Sunday. But because of Jesus Christ, because of the love that He showed me when I was unlovable, because of the love He showed me when I wasn't thinking about Him, because of the love He showed me on Calvary's cross over 2,000 years ago, now I understand what real love is all about. Because He loved me when I didn't love myself. He loved me when I was no good. He loved me when I couldn't think about Him. He loved me in spite of who I was. He 
said, but we have this treasure. Yeah. Yeah. This treasure. So, so, so understanding, first and foremost, that, 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 that this gospel that Paul preaches, this gospel, this, this, this light that has shined in our hearts, uh, understanding how valuable it is will, will bring to mind the, 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 the interesting fact that he's placed this thing inside a jar of clay. Yeah. And when you think about this word, this word earthen, it really, it really, it really brings to mind what, what we're talking about here today because uh, it, it literally is, it, 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 it means a baked, baked clay. Something that has been put into the fire. Uh, 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 uh. All right, yeah. And, 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 and in reality, in reality, all of us have to go through the fire at some point in time. All of us, it, it, it's either it's either you go through it now, or you go through it later. But sooner or later, you're gonna go through it. But 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 in reality, it's probably I'm going through it then. I went through it then. I'm going through it now, and I'm probably gonna go through a little bit of it tomorrow too. Because I know that I know that these struggles are not sit in my direction in order to tear me down, but they sit in my direction in order to help me to realize how, how fragile I am, how weak I am, how ineffective I am to do anything on my own. I don't have the power to fight by myself. I don't have the power to overcome by myself. I don't have the power to do things all by myself, but I got something that's on the inside of me that helps me in spite of myself. When I don't feel like fighting, I got something on the inside of me that gives me the power to keep going when I feel like giving up. I got something on the inside of me. I'm so thankful. Where he starts taking some stuff off 
and you know, start turning some stuff out of us that don't believe need to be there. Some 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 bad language, some some bad attitudes, some 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 hatred in our heart, some malice towards our brother or sister. He has to take some stuff off of us in order that we can be more of a bit vessel for him. And see, that's why sometimes we have to go through what we go through. Because he's making us ready to be a vehicle that he can use for the cause of Christ. Because too often there's some of us, some, many of us, most of us, all of us come to him full of our mess. Full of mess. And if we, if we took the time to start calling out all the mess that we, we wouldn't even have enough time. But thanks be to God. Understood that, that his, he didn't have any power on his own. 
That's why just in the book of 2 Corinthians, just in the book of 2 Corinthians, Paul mentioned the power of God, the power, the power of God over and over, 26 times in 22 verses. Because he understood how, how much the power of God was important in his life and what he was trying to do. Because and there's too many of us, there's too many of us we're operating, we're operating uh, in, in, in a deficient state because we're not connected to the power source. Amen. Or 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 we, we consider God, we, we consider God a resource instead of the source. See, but God is not a resource. I see people all the time that say God is my co-pilot. Yeah. Yeah. See, and that's the way many of us go through this life. We go through this life. We we we, we think God. We, we we try to put put God in in, in, in the second chariot so He can follow us and we can do what we want. And, and then we just ask Him to help us when when we are messed up. No, if you just let God lead in the first place, you wouldn't have gone through what you're going through. If you would have paid attention. What God was trying to tell you before, you wouldn't have went the direction you went. If you want to be better off, don't allow God to be your co-pilot. Let God call all the shots. See, because if you let God call the shot, then you can sit and rest and you ain't got to worry about it because you know that you are in the master's hand. And when you're in the master's hand, it doesn't matter what goes up or comes down, everything is going to work out because it's going to work out the way he designed it. Not the way you want it, not the way you fix it up in your mind, not the way somebody else told you it was going to be, but it's going to work out the way God said. And whatever God said is always the right thing. He said, we are troubled on every side. We're troubled on every side. The word troubled actually means to be squeezed, to be, to, 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 to be pressed, to, 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 to be uh, uh, constricted into the, to the point where we don't feel like we can move. And that's what happens in life a lot of times. We feel like we're, we're the, the, the walls are closing in on us and we ain't got nowhere to go. But here's what I like about what Paul says right here. He, he reveals not only his, his human deficiency, but he, put, he, he, he fixes it up so that he un, helps us to understand where God comes in. He says, he says, I'm troubled on every side. I get squeezed. And I, I don't know sometimes where to go. He said, but 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 then but then the word yet, the word yet and the word but follow each one of these. Okay. Now, what why is that important? Well, but at the beginning carries the same idea here in these verses. The, when you see but, when you see but, it negates or 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 or, or contrasts what follows it. And so when he says we're troubled on every side, he said, yet not distressed. Yeah. And, and see, 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 I'm troubled on every side. I'm squeezed, I'm squeezed to the point where I feel like I can't go nowhere else. But, but when God steps in, I still got a little bit extra room. Yes, I, I, I still have somewhere to go because God is one who when I fall short, he can fill in the gap because he's got more strength than I got. So when it feels like the walls are closing in, and see, that's what, that's, what, that's what it feels like sometimes. It feels like, it feels like, it feels like at times that the walls are closing in. And, 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 and you feel like you feel like you 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 if you if you like me I'm I, well I'm I, I don't like tight close places I uh, where they claustrophobia or whatever but I yeah I I, I don't like talking tight spaces and when I get into tight spaces I get a little bit uneasy so I don't don't, 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 don't try to get me in none of those yeah, don't be trying to don't be trying to hit me in nowhere y'all y'all might make the make yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm just, just, just tell y'all the truth. Yeah, I, I, I got off an elevator one time because there were too many people on there. I know. Uh, I know. Uh, you got too many in here. Too many in here. But, 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 but see, but when, but when we happen, when, when, when we start to 
feels like the walls are closing in and it feels like we can't catch our breath and we feel like that's when God will step in and give you just a little bit extra. See, because we can't do, we don't have the power or the resources to, to, to handle certain things. We don't have the power or the resources to move certain things out of the way. But what I know about God is God is a power. He has all power. That means all power. That means whatever you go through, whatever circumstance you find yourself in, God can move it out the way. He can uh, he can manipulate, he can transform, he can change so that it will work out in your favor. So all you have to do is make sure that you're holding on to God and changing him. Paul said, Paul said, we are perplexed but not in despair. Perplexed, perplexed, I'm confused, I'm confused. I don't know which way to go. And sometimes that's what happens to us. We go through things and we, we don't talk to the, the, the pastor and we still don't know which way to go. We don't talk to some of our friends and our buddies and their advice don't help us. And, and then we talk to God. And when we talk to God, God can redirect our energy. He can redirect our actions because everything we need to know about this life, God has the answer for it. And if you don't know how to lean on God, and you don't know how to consult with him, then you ought to learn because everything that's good that you comes in your life comes from God. So as long as you're leaning on him, God will always lead you where he wants you to go. But you have to call on him first. Say that, say that. Where we mess up is we, we, we think God, God is, God is not, God is not. People, people want to make God out to be like he's this dictator that's just sitting up sitting up above, making these orders and doing that. God is not a dictator. He allows us to exercise our free will. That, that, means, that means that oftentimes God doesn't involve himself in, in our affairs unless we call him. All right. All right. He doesn't, he doesn't involve himself in our affairs unless we call him. And that's the problem. Too many times we go through life and we never call on God. We feel like we have the answers. Or we feel like Big Mama's got all the answers. Or we feel like Uncle Joe Bob got all the answers. We feel like our, our neighbor down the road got all the answers. But all of them have limited power. But the one that we have to lean on is the one that has all power. But he's also all knowing. So he can see that Big Mama can't see. He can see things that Pastor White can't see. He can see things that your, your mother-in-law or your brothers can't see because God is able. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He said we're persecuted, persecuted, but not forsaken. Persecuted. That means we're being chased. Chased. It always, it, it, it seems like, it seems like, it seems like there's always something out to get us. And, and, and here's where you ought to, sometimes you ought to feel that way simply because you decided yourself with the winning team. And when you, those of you who play sports, you were friends with everybody that was on your team, were, uh, were most people. Most, most people that was on your team, they, there, was a, there was a few on your team that was a little bit hard to deal with. But, 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 but for the most part, when, 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 when you were in, 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 the, in the line of battle, you had your teammates who you would support and help and do everything to help ensure that they were victorious. But you also had those on the opposite side. And those people weren't trying to help you. Those people weren't trying to, to, to lift you up. Those people weren't trying to, to, to steer you in a, way, in a way that will allow you to win. And so what happens is, if you're not catching hell right now, maybe it's because we're not on the right team. Because if you're on the Lord's side, that means you're on the, the side of the winner. And the enemy is going to come after you because he's going to try everything he can to limit you, to limit what God wants to do for you because you're on the wrong side. Now, you used to be on his team, but now, now he, you're on the winning side. And because you're on the winning side, now you are placing yourself. Placing yourself as a target. Sometimes, sometimes, sometimes going through what we go through is not, is not, uh, there's, a, there's a quote I read several years ago. It said, it said all, suffering, uh, all suffering is not the result of sin, but all sin results in suffering. Oh, yes. All suffering is not the result of sin, but all sin results in suffering. 
That means that, that there's sometimes you go through some things not because something you've done, but, 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 but simply because you're on the wrong side. Or the right side, because the right side is any side that God's on. And I'm glad to be on the Lord's side. I'm glad to be on the Lord's side because I know that the victory is already won. And when I'm on the Lord's side, he told me that I am already a conqueror through Jesus Christ. So I know that as long as I stay on his side, it doesn't matter what it feels like down here. Guess what? In the end, I still win. It doesn't matter what goes up or comes down. Guess what? In the end, I still win because I'm on the winning side. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah. He said, he said persecuted, but uh, but not forsaken. That means that means when we're forsaken, that means it doesn't matter if I'm being chased. I know that I'm never alone. I know that I'm not by myself. See, because sometimes we go through this thing called life, and we get to a point where everybody we thought we could depend on, they is no longer nowhere to be found. And they leave us all by ourselves. That's why sometimes we're crying in the midnight hour all by ourselves. We pick up the phone and try to dial a number, and nobody wants to pick up the phone. Nobody wants to come and check on you. And you feel like you're all by yourself. And it's at that time when you need to lean and depend on the one who has taken care of your soul. Because God is the one. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. So as long as you got breath, you always got somebody who can depend on. You can depend on him because he is there every step of the way. In the midnight hour, he's there. In the morning when you call him, he's there. In the noon day when you call him, he's there. When you're by yourself and you call him, he's there. When you're in a group of people, guess what? He's still right there because Jesus is always He said, he said, cast down. Cast down. This, I, I like this one. This is, this is, this is like, I, 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 you, you, get, you get, we get knocked down sometimes. Yeah. And this, this, Paul, Paul liked athletics. And this, this actually is more similar to an athletic term in that he said, I, I get knocked down, but I'm not out for a count. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I'm getting knocked down, but I'm not out for the count. Yeah. And, 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 and sometimes, sometimes the devil thinks he's implied so much pressure and then put us through so much that he's got us where he wants us. He's got us where we all dejected and we're down. See, because when, 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 when the enemy comes after you, he's not after your doubt. He's after your faith. Uh -huh. he, he, he comes to get you to, to doubt your relationship with God. He comes to get, to get you to doubt your, your, the, the fact that God loves you and that, the, the fact that God cares for you. He, he comes and tries to get you to, 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 to doubt the fact that your soul is secure because of your faith in Jesus Christ. He comes to get you to doubt that God loves you and can care for you and can lift you up. And, 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 and so when we are going through this, 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 this persecution or we're cast down and we're knocked out, we're knocked down, we know that as long as we got God on our side, we can get back up. Yeah. We, we, we can get back up because, because I'm not relying on my strength. And you know what? I, 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 like, I like this analogy because this is, this, is pretty, this is pretty similar to what many of us have gone through. We, 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 we didn't all felt as if the, the, the world had knocked us down. And we didn't all felt like the, 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 the circumstances of life had knocked us down. We didn't lost all our hope. We didn't, we, we didn't lost all our trust in God. We didn't lost, we didn't lost a, 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 a large portion of our faith. But even when in our weakest hour, God still comes through. And I'm so thankful that God didn't leave me to my own devices. Because when we need God, guess what? Every time we need him, we, he shows up. In the midnight hour, he's there when we call him. And I'm so thankful that I can get up when I feel knocked down. Because I'm not relying on my own strength. I'm relying on the one named Jesus Christ who died on Calvary's cross so I can have a right to the tree of life. I'm relying on Jesus' cross who said that he came and walked this earth for 33 years. He lived for 33 years. He was sight to the blind, giving, making the lame man walk, making the blind man see. He fed 5,000 hungry souls, but he knew that he didn't 
come here for that. He knew he came to die for all humanity. So I'm trusting in Jesus Christ who went to Calvary's cross where he hung there from the third to the sixth to the ninth hour and hung his head in the locks of his shoulders and he died. I'm relying on the man that they put in a borrowed man's tomb. But three days later, he got up with all
Okay, all right. <laughs>